Hello guys and gals, welcome back. I'm responding to a comment today. Uh, KV asked, can I do a video on delay, delay timings? Initially, the question was kind of centered around an engineering perspective. I did point out I'm trying not to do much of the engineering side on this channel. That's really well covered on YouTube already. I'm trying to cover the more musician, musical theory side that doesn't get talked about in uh, electronic music for some reason. But the more I thought about it, there is a lot of musicality to the way I approach delays. And if you get that kind of stuff right, then it will help your mix out quite a lot in the long run anyway. So here's my tips and tricks on delay timings. Let's go. Okay, delays. So as you may or may not know, these numbers, these displays in fractions are just note lengths, the same as you would have in MIDI. So one quarter is one on every beat, like a kick drum. So I've lined up a kick drum here, just so we can keep time. I've got a single hit here. So if I turn this on, we'll get one echo on every note of the kick until it decays. So that's quarter notes. Nice and easy. And eighth notes, twice as fast. It should be two every kick. And again with sixteens, this will be four every kick. So now I'm going to turn the delay off and show you what this would look like if it was just written out in MIDI. So there's no delay on now, this is just MIDI. Obviously eighths looks like this. Sixteenths. Obviously four every kick. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward, but what are these other timings here? What is D? Well, D stands for dotted. Some delays will just write D, some will actually write out dotted, and some will just give you the dot, the full stop, the period. That comes from old school written manuscript. They would put a dot after the note length. And what it means is you add half again on top. So in the case of a quarter note, a dotted quarter means you add half a quarter on top. So half a quarter is an eighth. So in other words, it's three eighths. So a, a dotted quarter would look like this. I've changed my grid to eighths and now I'm putting one every three because this would be a quarter, repeat, and half again, the dot is this length. Let me show you that back on the actual delay. Quarter note dotted on our echo here. We'll take the delay off and we look at our... So that's what we're getting. It's half on top again. Here's what a dotted eighth sounds like. So in, in other words, three sixteenths. You'll sometimes hear dotted rhythms called the dub delay. Back to the actual delay, dotted eighths. So half the note length on top again. And the last timing mode you should see on your delay will either be written as just a T or it's full word triplet. Now triplets often get confused with dotted rhythms, but they are different. A triplet is when you squeeze three notes of equal length into the space of two. This would be a triplet eighth. So that's three notes equally spread over the space of two quarters. So that makes each one two thirds of a quarter. You keeping up with this? <laughs> 
obviously the most confusing bit is it's not an eighth at all anymore when it's a triplet. I suppose they're just using its nearest neighbour. So turn on our delay, put it on eighth triplets. Should sound like this. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. It's basically like you've set your grid to 12, eight instead of four, four, because there will be 12 eighths in a bar. That's how triplets are calculated. So it's three every two beats, basically. So why the maths lesson? <laughs> basically, when you start to understand where the extra notes that you're repeating will land in your groove, we can make decisions which not only help the mix, but help the groove as opposed to hinder it. Because those two are related. When you get a messy groove, your mix is going to be harder as well. So let me show you some examples, some tracks I've done. Okay, so I've got a track here which is almost designed around the use of delay. When you get used to certain rhythms and thinking about apes, dotted, all that kind of thing within your writing, you start to get experience with what delays can help with those grooves. There's three parts in this track and they all rely on the delay for the groove. We've got the bass, the lead, and the stub part as well. So here's the bass. So that's fine. So let me show you what I do with the delay. So our bass rhythm is uh, an eighth and then a dotted eighth. And how I use the delay on this line, I'm going to use an eighth delay. And you'll see what it does is it adds a little rhythmic push to these gaps. So you won't hear this one, but this one will fill in just before this one. And let me show you what that does to the groove. Here's without. And with an eighth delay in there. Hear how that helps it kind of skip along? Now, if you're not writing your own MIDI and you're using samples, you can still apply the same principles. I've got this stab part here. You just have to see where the waveform lands versus your grid. Here's what the stab sounds like. So same principle. Let me show you a bar of this versus a 16th grid. We can see we've got, these are an eighth apart. These are a dotted eighth apart. Got some more dotted over here. So again, I've chosen an eighth to bounce between those dotted eight spaces. Now I've also added a subtle 16th. I really liked what it sounded like. It was kind of sounding like it was bouncing around a room and this part isn't supposed to be too forward anyway. So in parallel, not one after the other, in parallel, I've stacked the 16th and the eighth. And then we've got obviously the dry signal. So let me show you how that pushes the groove as well. See how much bounce that gives it? I'll show you the dry one again. And with. I've cranked them a little bit there so you can hear them better for the demonstration. Probably be a bit more subtle in the mix, but you can hear what that does for the groove. So again, I've got away with two delays on that track because I know where the spaces are and I know which bits I want to fill and which I don't. And that's not a problem for our mix. Not only that, it's also helping our groove. Now, this is a common trick in a lot of house and trance. This entire lead is a dotted rhythm. See, we're on 16th here. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So three sixteenths apart, i.e. dotted eighth. 
and it doesn't stop until it comes around every two bars. Now, listen to the bounce that happens when I add an eighth delay to that dotted rhythm. Now we're going to get that little nudge just before the next note. It's going to be here. No repeats needed. I just need an eighth. And it's going to sound like this. So here's the whole thing. Cool, right? Let's compare the whole track without any delays on. You'll see how much groove we've lost. So it's kind of flat by comparison, doesn't it? So there's a great example of using delay for groove, not just ambience. Okay, I couldn't do a video on delay without mentioning this piece, the iconic Time 2 by Ewan Dobson. I'm going to leave a link in the description, but I'm going to show you what's happening. This is a classic example of designing around delay. If you have a musical part which is entirely square, i.e. all eighths, all quarters, etc. If you add a dotted delay with a single repeat to all of that, you get a new complex rhythm and melody. So. Let me show you without first. This is the melody that's going on underneath. These are all eighth notes. And then there's a part over here as well that does this. Nice and simple, right? So if we just add a single, these are eighths. So if we add a dotted eighth to this, I'll just play you a single note. This is what we're adding. Just that one repeat. Now watch what happens when I turn this up. How cool is that? Listen to this part. Without. It's a fantastic piece of music. Go and check it out. The link's in the description. But definitely a trick to note. If you've got an entirely square rhythm, Try adding a dotted delay to it. Okay, before I show you this hack, I just wanted to do a quick disclaimer for Ableton users. Ableton displays some of its delay timings in this grid, and it's not what you'd think it would be. You'd think one would be a beat, two would be, anyway. It's all multiples of a sixteenth. So one is sixteenth, two is an eighth, three is a dotted eighth, four is a quarter, so on and so on and so on. In, uh, if you want triplets, you have to add swing with the percentage, which is arguably more control, but a um, strange way of doing it. So I just thought I'd let you know, because it's not the usual uh, way of displaying delay timings. Anyway, what I wanted to show you was, if you've ever tried this situation where you wanted to echo uh, something into like a build-up, I've got a vocal doing this uh, word here. That kind of thing. If you wanted to increase the delay, obviously you can automate the, um, the timing. But while you're synced to tempo, it's not going to be very smooth because it's all, it's going to move in big steps. Uh, which will all be in time, but if you wanted it to be a bit more chaotic and smoother, you can unsync the delay with this button here. Most delays have this, so you it will swap to milliseconds instead of syncing to your grid. But 
But the problem is, most delays don't give you the milliseconds of the equivalent timing you were just on. So in my case, one quarter is not the same as 375. It's not being very, if I, if I swap this, for example, it stays on 375. It's not, um, a lot of delays have this behavior. It's very annoying. And um, what I wanted to show you was the quick trick to work out what your milliseconds are. So you can, st you can start in time and then smoothly adjust it. So, so all you do is take a calculator and it's 60,000 because that's the number of milliseconds in a minute. What else is in minutes? BPM, beats per minute. So you divide that by your beats per minute. We're at 123. And that will give us one beat. What is one beat? It's a quarter note, which is exactly what I want right now. So you can just divide this by two or double it, etc. if you need other calculations. So 487, round it up, 488. So unsync my delay. We go 488. Now I can start in time. But then I can... That kind of thing. So a quick trick there. 60,000 divided by your BPM gives you one quarter note. Okay, that's all I can think of for now. I hope that helps some of you. If it did, leave me a like. If it really helped you, leave me a sub or a comment. And until next time, go and get your dotted date groove on. <laughs> God, these outros are terrible, aren't they? I'm so sorry. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.